I want to introduce you to someone whom you may not be familiar with. And that's Poochie. He was the hitman for Suge Knight and the real killer of Biggie Smalls. Biggie was murdered in March of 97, just six months after Tupac. We've heard ridiculous conspiracies, but Greg Kading has our answer. Both murders appear to be at the center of a beef between Bad Boy and Death Row. Now, Biggie's murder is widely considered to have been in retaliation to Pox. Biggie was killed by an associate of Suge Knight's. He hired a guy named Poochie to track down Biggie at the Peterson Auto Museum in March of 1997 and wait for him outside. I think somebody's trying to kill me. I'll be waking up paranoid. I'll be really scared. I just be power. <laughs> like just the way I am. You know, you see me scared to death. The tragic murder of all time in the hip hop industry, Biggie Small's case, has just been solved. The hitman named Poochie has been revealed to be the one who was behind the unjustified demise of Biggie. Well, who spilled the juice and how did Suge Knight come into play? We have all the deets for you, so let's get into it. Christopher George Latour Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, was one of the most influential rappers of all time. He put all the East Coast on his back when the West Coast was dominating the industry. After the release of his first album, he was killed in a gunshot altercation just six months after his friend Tupac was killed. Well, this is what an ex-FBI agent has to say about the case. According to a now-retired FBI agent, Phil Carson, the timing of the Biggie killing was far from incidental. He not only claims that it was a paid hit ordered by infamous Death Row Records mogul Suge Knight, but also a massive police cover-up across the board. In an interview with the New York Post, he called Biggie's case the biggest miscarriage of justice in my 20-year career at the FBI. Detective Cadding, who was assigned to this case, also concedes with the ex-FBI agent. Let's hear out what he has to say. According to Greg, Poochie was a well-known gang member from Compton who was reportedly paid $13,000 by Suge to kill Biggie. However, Poochie was never charged with the murder. In 02, Poochie was shot 20 times in the back. Now we know this because one of Suge's baby mamas went to the authorities with all the information. She identified Poochie as the person that had been solicited to do the murder, provided other details that were only known to law enforcement, and said that Suge Knight had solicited it from jail. Not only that, he further summarized the case in an interview saying, Ordell Pucci Faust was paid to kill Biggie, Kading told Complex. At the time, he was a 36-year-old member of the mob Piru Bloods. According to several death row insiders and FBI informants, Pucci was a down-for-the-cause, hardcore gang member. Confidential sources from the death row entourage, the mob Pyrus, and Suge's girlfriend, identified in Canning's book by the alias Teresa Swan, said Pucci had done shootings for Suge in the past. Well, as you heard from the detective himself how he viewed the whole case, that also helped to point out the crucial factors to get through this unsolved yet mysterious case. Biggie Smalls was shot from a passing vehicle. Biggie was in L.A. in March 1997, promoting his second album, Life After Death. After attending the Soul Train Music Awards, the star was supposed to fly to London. The gangster rapper decided to enjoy himself at the after party, which he didn't know was the biggest mistake of his life. Biggie and the rest of the Bad Boy Records crew were leaving the party to hit another spot just after midnight. They hopped in two SUVs with Diddy in the front car, Biggie in the second, and the security team following both of them. Before they could even reach the destination, a Chevy Impala pulled against them and the driver started letting out bullets. Biggie got hit four times and one of the rounds went through his colon, liver, heart, and lung. His crew rushed into the hospital, but the wounds were too much, and he was tragically pronounced dead less than an hour later. If you are not in the loop, Suge Knight is one of many notorious names associated with this murder. As a result of Suge's long criminal history, assaults, domestic violence, murder, you name it, he has it all. The terror of Suge did not go unnoticed by the famous filmmaker Broomfield. At the same time, he also talked about people starting to open up about Suge Knight, saying, People are much more prepared to talk now. Now that Suge Knight's behind bars, a lot of people are coming forward that were frankly frightened of getting killed before. They was not scared of Suge Knight. They was terrified. You might be wondering why anybody who ran into Suge would run the other way. Well, having friends in high places can do that to you. In October 1987, Knight revealed how crazy he is when he assaulted his girlfriend and chopped off her ponytail on the street. He was then arrested and charged with domestic violence. On Halloween, Knight was arrested for allegedly stealing a vehicle while carrying a concealed weapon. He was also charged with attempted murder because he was not only alleged of stealing a vehicle, but was also alleged of firing at the driver three times during the auto theft. 
With this kind of criminal recording along with his reputation, it's not hard to imagine how he got Biggie killed, even though he was in prison the whole time. Well, it does show that he wasn't called the King of the West Coast for nothing. His history with people on the bad side of the neighborhood came in handy for hiring a hitman, as you might imagine. The cold-blooded killer Shug hired was Poochie. Poochie never hanged out like all the other gang members. He was loyal to Suge Knight, and they kept the relationship private. According to sources, Pucci used to hang out at Let Me Ride Hydraulic Shop and was getting paid in cars and other valuable things. He was a socially awkward guy, but was very comfortable in Suge's circle. Detective Cadding, in an interview with Swag and Music, explained his theory regarding the case, saying, Once Pac was killed, a rumor started that it had been Biggie who solicited Pac's murder instead of Puffy. Suge was enraged over the attempt on his life and the death of Pac, so he hired a Compton gang member who had done shootings for him in the past to kill Big in retaliation. The gang member went to the Peterson Auto Museum, waited outside for Biggie to leave, pulled up next to him in his green Impala, and shot Big. Suge paid the guy the money he promised him, and the guy left town while the police fumbled around trying to figure out what happened. Of course now Suge knows it was Puffy, not Biggie, who was responsible for Pac's murder, and has even said so in recent interviews. With the information provided by Greg, we can conclude that Pucci was at Suge's beck and call when it came to shooting. With all the things previously mentioned, one question still stays unanswered. Why? Why did Suge want to kill Biggie? It's no secret that the beef between the East and West Coast was at its worst, especially after the murder of Biggie's former friend Tupac. Tupac had just been killed a few months earlier, and Biggie told a radio show called The Dog House that he hired a security team because of how crazy the East versus West Coast beef was getting. Before his murder, Biggie was aware that someone is after his blood. He even expressed fear for his well-being, revealing the gravity of the situation he feels he was in. One can see the unease and tension on his face as he spoke about his concerns. I think somebody's trying to kill me. I'll be waking up paranoid. I'll be really scared. I'll just be paranoid. <laughs> That's just the way I am. You know, you be seeing me scared to death. The terror in Biggie's voice is palpable. But who was the man actually whose bullet took the life of one of the gems of hip hop music? Everyone knew Suge Knight and Biggie, but there is next to no information regarding the man who pulled the trigger. Well, the hitman, Poochie's real name was Wardell Foe, who was born in Louisville, Kentucky. His family moved to Compton, California in the mid 70s, where he lived on Bradfield Street on the east side of Compton. Well, now at least you get the basic information about the man who pulled the trigger. But what you don't know is that the hitman also had violent tendencies from quite an early age, as this prominent incident also took place when he was only 14 years old. Pucci was involved in a physical altercation with another male outside a home on South Harris Street in Compton. After losing the fist fight, Pucci returned home and obtained a shotgun. He then had his stepfather drive him back to the scene at which time Pucci fired the weapon at the Johnson home. As a result of this incident and several others, he was recruited into the Park Piru Gang, also known as the Black American Gang, which operated on the east side of the coast. And just like that, he began his career as a professional criminal. But it seems like being in the gang was not enough for him. So he took up a career of being Suge's hitman. Brooklyn hip-hop legend Mob James, who knew Pucci from being in the same industry, is quite sure about him being the murderer. In an interview with Vlad TV, he said he knew who was the killer, and according to him, anybody in their right mind knew. You know, Pucci was a go-getter. Pucci was, you f with me, I'm a f with you kind of cat. Uh, he was a little older than us, but, you know, he was he was known for his get-down. It's a cold title to give but uh, if I had to say yes or no, I would say very big possibility. Even Mob the Legend in the field agrees that Biggie's murder was a setup, directed by no one other than Suge himself. Further in the interview, he went on to say, Everybody in their right mind that was there knows what happened, but ain't nobody going to say, Poochie, Poochie, Poochie. Now that he's dead, everybody can speak on it. And whatever now. I'm surprised they haven't come and said that they know who did it. Aside from Mob, the former Death Row Records artist Danny Boy recently sat down with The Art of Dialogue, where he discussed Biggie's 1997 murder. He explained how he got a creepy vibe from the suspected gunman whenever he was around him. Do you believe it? That he has something to do with Biggie? Yeah, getting killed. Nah, I don't know. I don't think, no. I don't know, but do I, do I believe that that man was a killer? Hell yeah. 
uh, incident. Even though he did not specify that he believed Pucci murdered Biggie or not, but he did say later in the interview, for sure, like I've seen a lot of homies beaten flipped the room upside down, when he came around, he looked really serious. I don't think he gave an F about music. Like, he looked like one of those people who don't even listen to music. It wasn't a nice feeling when he came around for me. Along with Danny, the music executive, Sean Bolding, has recently come forward with a groundbreaking statement in an interview with 247HH.com. He says that he thinks he was there when the people were planning Biggie's murder. I've never talked about this publicly, uh, but you're asking me. Uh, I was there the night Biggie was killed. And uh, from my perspective, I kind of saw it, the writing on the wall while, uh, developing while I was sitting there. I was in the uh, party. Uh, I was at the party prior to any of Bad Boy arriving. That night, I was sitting on the dance floor, and I'm being living in the, uh, on the West Coast for some time. I recognize when, you know, people throwing up signs now, and, and they were doing it a little bit heavier and, and emphasizing it a lot more once Bad Boy came in and they were directing it towards Bad Boy. Sean's statement further solidifies the fact that Biggie's death was planned and orchestrated by Suge. There's no way that the whole West Coast was jittery and throwing signals at each other, and Suge did not know. It's simply not possible. Shortly after, Teresa Swan, who was the girlfriend of Suge Knight and the mother of Suge's child, also came forward with a decisive evidence that helped to conclude the case, unofficially. She confessed to LAPD detectives. Teresa explains that she made two payments to Pucci. The initial one was for $9,000. However, he comes back later to collect an additional $4,000 so that he can get out of town. Now when we do the math, there's $13,000 doled out to Pucci. The contract was supposedly for $25,000, so, assumedly, the remaining $12,000 was retained by Teresa Swan for her role in the conspiracy. Well, taking into account all these statements, confessions, and evidence collected from various sources, we can surely prove that the murder of Biggie was set up allegedly by Suge Knight. Even though Pucci is not alive to be held accountable, a case should be filed against Suge for causing the demise of an innocent life that was also the most innovative minds of all times. The people who love Biggie and his music are still heartbroken to this day. One fan commented, Nobody wanted to be the first to say it was Pucci, but once his name came up, all the OGs said, that's what they heard too. He was definitely a dangerous dude, even in death. Another paid tribute to Biggie saying, Let the great late Frank White rest in peace. Fly high, B.I.G. We will always love Big Papa. That's it for today's video. Until next time, goodbye.